Hey guys, we've got an updated tour of the kit here for you because I've got quite a few new bits, mainly cymbals, since I last did the update on the kit. Uh, you might notice I haven't got all the toms on. Uh, I've normally got five toms, two floor toms, three racks, and then two snares. I use a 13 and a 14, that's the 14 there. Uh, that's kind of unnecessary for most of the things I'm recording today to have that many drums. And actually, if I'm honest, I haven't got enough mics to mic the full kit up just yet. So perhaps once I do, we'll see the full kit again. But yeah, let's have a quick look through. So we've got... This is a Tama Star Classic Performer BB, which is half birch, half babinga. If you haven't tried this combination of wood yet, you'd need to, because it's it sounds absolutely amazing. Looks just as good. I don't know if you can see the finish there. That's Indigo Sparkle Burst. It's a shame the lights aren't quite doing it justice for my camera. It looks prettier than that. So this is a 22 by 18 kick drum. And then up here we've got a 10 by 8, I think it is, and that's a 12 by 9. And then there's a 16 by 14 floor tom. Apologies for my heads, they're not actually as wrecked as they look. Um, my 13 inch snare came with a Evans coated head on it, this is kind of why I use Remo. The coating came off onto my sticks and ended up all over my tom heads here. But actually they've only been on for a couple of weeks, I think. Uh, they're about as new as that snare head is there, but yeah, as I say, the coating ended up all over the heads. Uh, skins wise, we've got pinstripes on the three toms. There's a power stroke four on the bass drum. Let's come around the other side and have a look at that. There you go, that's the power stroke four. It's a double ply as opposed to the power stroke three, which is single ply. And then this snare head, this is special. This is a new little development from Remo. This is the Power Stroke 77. So it's a double ply. I think it's two thinner plies with a reinforcing dot in the middle. And then it's got a collar, kind of like the Power Stroke uh, 3s have and the Power Stroke 4 as well. It's quite a thin collar though on it. Um, you can't see it, but it probably only comes out to this far into the edge. But yeah, perfect for controlling the overtones on the snare. I've got a little bit of moon gel on there just to tame it a little bit more because we're micing things close today. Uh, at the moment, we're using uh, Vic Fur 5Bs. I've kind of ditched the extremes for a little while because I found they'll give me a bit of fatigue in the in the wrist sort of thing. But yeah, the standard size seems to suit me a little better at the moment. And uh, without further ado, let's look at these beautiful new symbols I've got. That's a set of 13-inch Minel Byzantz Fast Hi-Hats. This is quite an interesting combination here. I, I didn't actually realise this because all the pictures of them, uh, when you ordered them, they look like that. But what I didn't realise was that the bottom symbol is dark finish, so it's that beautiful combination of the two actually. I wasn't sure of whether to go for the dark hats or the brilliant ones and went with these and Gladham did. And they've got the holes in the edge to sort of make them sound a bit tighter when they're closed. Um, see if we can hear that, I haven't actually done a clutch up yet, but yeah, you can see very tight when they're closed. I like a good tight sound. I hate it when hi-hats sound like open when they're closed. And then up here, this is a 16 inch Byzance vintage trash crash. It's one of my favorite symbols. This is, it sounds amazing. Really, really thin, but it seems to take a beat and unlike other ozones I've used in the past. And then this is a minor 18 inch medium thin brilliant crash. And this is a 10 inch minor Byzance again, uh, brilliant splash. And then this is the new one. You might have noticed I've been rocking the same ride for about 20 years. Before I get into this symbol, let's give the old ride some credit. 25 years, not bad for a 50 quid symbol. It sounded really nice, the old pearl I had. It always had a good bell on it. And yeah, I did quite a bit of research into this ride to be able to replace it. So this is the 20-inch uh, vintage pure Byzance ride. And yeah, it sounds really dark and dirty here. But it has a good bell. And that's the main thing I'm looking for in a ride cymbal, really. I play more bell than I do the rest of the cymbal most of the time in a lot of the music situations that I end up in. So, yeah, I had to have a good bell. I noticed a lot of the other darker cymbals, they sounded great on the sort of palette of the cymbal, but the bell was a little bit sacrificed. I was going to go for one of these at first. This is a 20-inch extra dry thin crash. Beautiful symbol. If you haven't heard Chris Coleman play one of these, have a listen to Chris Coleman playing one of these because it will make you want one just as badly as I did. <laughs> Really trashy and nasty, man. That's that's for the big accents. And speaking of accents, we've got the stack down here. It's a 14-inch Generation X uh, filter china with a 12-inch classic custom trash splash on the top. Giving it that nice trashy sound. Let's hear that one. There you go. It's a bit tight at the moment, but I tend to find when you're recording, uh, it, it sounds looser than it actually is. So I tend to tighten it more than I actually need to. And, yeah, so mic-wise... The, I'll put the actual models of these up. This is the PGA models that Shaw offer. They're quite cheap 
as microphones go. So we've got yeah, the PGA 57, I think that is on the snare, and then the PGA 50, 56 <laughs> on the toms. There. Sorry, I had to read that to be able to find out on each of the toms. Uh, overheads, these are, uh, what are they? PGA 81 overheads, these are. Obviously a pair. These are powered, so uh, I needed to have a interface that had phantom power. I'll show you the interface in just a sec. Uh, this kick mic is a PGA 52. It looks like most kick mics, the rugby ball sort of shape to it. Uh, let's have a look at the recording equipment. I'm running Sonar on my laptop here, and that is USB in into down here. We have my interface. This is a Tascam 16 by 8, and uh, yeah, it has the phantom power channels that my uh, overhead mics will need and see all the mics patch into there and then that USBs into sonar just here and then camera wise we're trying something a little bit new today I've got the old Sanyo Zacti camera I'll put the model number up that I used to use for all my videos down here on the kick now because for Christmas I got this beautiful little uh, Panasonic camera what's really awesome about this camera is that I can control it from my phone while I'm sitting over there. I can't tell you what pain in the backside it was to, uh, with the old camera, to have to sort of, if you do a duff take, you have to stop the audio, get up, stop the camera, delete that one, sit back down again, get everything ready, put your headphones on. By the time I'd done that, I found I was cold kind of thing, like I'd warmed up quite a bit during playing, and yeah, it ended up with me cooling down again. So yeah, to be able to just sit here and control all the cameras and the audio, is an absolute godsend at the moment. It's helping me get a lot more done anyway, that's for sure. So there you are guys, there's the full kit. It's been a labor of love for quite a while. It's taken me a while to replace all my old cymbals with these beautiful minor Byzance instruments here. I've had the drums for quite a while. I made sure I got all the sizes I wanted because unfortunately, uh, Tamar have since discontinued this particular model of kit in this finish. So yeah, I made sure I got all the drums I wanted to match, both snares match, everything's all in the same gorgeous indigo sparkle burst finish.